we bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege that we have of coming and worshiping thy dear beloved Son, the Lord Jesus. We thank you for ever being mindful of us descending to the earth to take we pour our sinners' place, to suffer there for our sins, and to take our sickness and bear it away. We're so thankful to enjoy tonight the attributes of our all sufficient sacrifice. Now, move into the hearts of the people in a special way tonight, Lord. Do something just outstanding, we pray. Not that we need yet to believe, but that unbelievers might believe. Hallelujah. May we say when we leave, like those from coming from Emmaus, no matter our hearts burn the finish, if you'll do something just special for us this night, we are praising in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be seated. <laughs> it's indeed a privilege to be here tonight to speak from this platform again to this lovely audience of people. I'm sure that we will be blessed by our coming together. I was just going and being brought in a few moments ago and entered into your minister's study. I heard my lovely brother Edward singing up down from his glory. That's my favorite hymn. And I was I knew he was here then. We've had some great times together and I'm happy to see Brother Edward feeling so well and looking healthy and everything. God bless him. Now I'll try each now to get just quickly as I can to the word that we won't be too long, or we don't know just how long we're going to be here in Chicago with you people. We trust that it'll be a part of our house. Now, I say, if you do not want to hurry, don't be excited, just wait, give God a chance, take your time, and then we want to stay long enough, or uh, if anything comes up later, or if you're afraid for it, we'll be here to see what it's all about. And um, sometimes people like a little face or something, or got among unbelievers, or got out in the wrong company, or something that could have happened, or just a foul type of Satan. He's good at that. So we pray that God will help us and give us the words to say that would be appropriate for the season. And now, Brother Joseph, our beloved pastor here, tells us that uh, we are going to the high school Sunday for. Sunday and next week. So we're happy for that. And may the Lord bless us over there and give us the best of his kingdom for his glory. Now, in St. John, the 15th chapter and the 7th verse, I wish to read this scripture. And if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And then in St. John 14, 12, we read these words. Dearly, dearly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And for a little subject tonight, I will take the fundamental foundation for faith. <clears throat> Coming in this type of meeting, it takes much prayer. It takes time to concentrate and consecration also to the Lord Jesus. At the end of the road when life is all over and I stand before the people that I've met here in this life, you'll only realize then what this has meant and what a what it takes and how the working of the Holy Spirit deals with us in that manner. It cannot be explained now. We just have to act by faith. That's the way I receive it. I cannot explain it. I just have to believe it. He gives it. I just receive it. Just let it go like that. That's his way of doing it. Now, we hear so many people say, well, if I only have faith, Faith is, doesn't mean long, drawn-out, so 
prayer meeting, or both mean long prayer. Faith is an unconscious thing. Your real faith, your unconscious have it. You don't know that the faith you have got is an unconscious matter with you. Could you imagine Jesus questioning whether he had faith enough to stop the winds or fill the waves or had faith enough to raise lives with us? Uh, he never questioned his faith. Now, the first thing, the we can have faith, we've got to have some foundation for faith. Right. There's got to be something behind it. A man, when he chooses his life companion, he usually inquires of her life and so forth, and what family is she out of, and what's her background, and so forth. If we have to have something like that to give a, a basis. You ask her. Uh, the only thing he can take is her word. That's all he can take. That's all she can take. For him. Here's his word, and there's no other way. And I'm so glad that God has faced it that way, that we, a uh, man taking his wife is out of us taking Christ as the bridegroom, or uh, uh, him taking us as bride, we just have to base it upon the Word. <coughs> now, what are we anyhow? How do we get here? What are we here for? Did you ever think of those things along those lines? We are human beings, and what made us human beings? What made us different from anything else on earth? Pardon <coughs> me. As human beings, no matter what a state a man's in, He's yet a son of God. No matter how sinful he is, how far away he is, he's a fallen son, but yet he's a son. God is his creator. God is his maker. God has bought him with a price. He may never uh, reconcile himself to us. He may never accept it. He may never do him any good. But yet he is a son, and she is a daughter of God. And what did God put man here for? Now, we can spend much time on these thoughts, but we won't. We just give a basic thought here for the night, then we'll go praying for the sick, or perhaps ministers who's already spoken so forth. And God, when he made man in the beginning, he made him superior to anything on earth. He gave him the jurisdiction of everything on earth to control everything. He controlled the animal life. He controlled the, the fire life, the fishes of the sea. He controlled the wind. He controlled the plant life. He controlled everything. Man was made as a secondary God on earth. He was given the power to control all things, all elements of the earth. That was Adam. Adam was given these great powers. But then the power that he was given to make his choice before he fell. And Adam could speak to the winds and it would stop. He could speak to the trees and they would obey him. He could speak to the wildlife. It would obey him. He could speak to the waters over what it was. Everything obeyed Adam. Now that is the beginning of man. That's what God gave him power over everything on the earth. Now through the fall, he lost that power. Then he became uh, unconscious of the fact that he was losing his relationship and friendship, fellowship with the Father, then he lost that. And all of his great channels become clogged up, and he couldn't get through. Now what Adam was in God, Christ has redeemed us back to that. Right. Yeah. Now, a redeemer. To redeem anything is to bring it back to its, to its origin again. And Adam never had to be sick, he never had to die, he never had a weary, he never had a heartache, he never had fear. He just climbed up in the arms of the Father and just had the child. Everything was here. And whatever he was, well, he just got it. Everything obeyed him because he was uh, God's child. And the child is heir of all things. Now, a man fell, he lost this. And now that he lost in the fall, Christ came as a redeemer. Did you ever stop to think what Christ redeemed us for? He gave us everlasting life. He brought us back to the 
We can't own fellowship and relationship to God, to be his sons and daughters again, to restore back all that Adam lost in the fire. Now, the thing of it is, since he has restored man back to this place, man in the fire has lost his conscience of what Father put him here on earth to do. In other words, all of the plumbing, as it was, in our brain and the outlook to faith has been clogged up with business affairs, with home life, domestic things. It's all become so a clog, clogged up with that until God can operate through those channels that he made a man for. Now, when God made the human body, every little part had its place to play. The teeth, the tongue, the eyes, the nose. God put everything in there to make it perfect in operation to make the man, to live. And if God so patterned the man, the body of a man, how much more is he patterned and set in order the body of Christ, the church? If God designed man's body, he certainly designed the body of his son, the church. And he's designed us to come together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and have these supernatural workings of God outlook to gifts of the Spirit, such as prophecy and wisdom and knowledge and, and gifts of healing and all these other different gifts. It's outlook that God lets out his power and lets out his revelation to the people. And not as an individual so much, but as a unit. We're all together, Amen. one great body of believers. Yes. And how do we get into this body, the mystic body of the Lord Jesus? By one spirit, we are all baptized into this body. Now, Satan, by the laws of sin and death, makes everything that sin and death but operate. If Satan sends a cancer, the man recognizes it, receives it. Satan sends heartache, we recognize it and receive it. And if Satan, by his power, can make his love work in man, how much more of God with his power make his love work in man? Yes. If Satan can make his love be sure enough to recognize him, how much more of God to his children to make his love be recognized yes. among his people? of divine healing, revelation, power, gifts, manifestations of the Spirit. The law of sin and death works in the people, and the law of the liberty of Christ is coming to us to set us free from those things. So I believe this with all my heart. I believe that we are nearing the age that when people are going to recognize these things, that we've had so much vain philosophy and so forth and teachings that ought not to be, until it has set the human mind to a revolution of thinking on matters of this and that and taking it away from the Word of God. As I said, faith doesn't come by fasting, faith doesn't come by praying. Reading a book, all oh, that's good, fasting, praying, and reading, reading a book. But faith comes by uh, a subtle something that's in the human heart that tells you just as sure as you come to this church now, go to return home, you told your wife you'd be home after the service is over, you do that unconsciously. That's right. You just go out and get in your car and go home. That's right. Now, you could not do it unless you have faith you could do it. You'll never move from where you're sitting. If you didn't have faith, you could raise up. But you've done it so much, and you just become so accustomed to those laws that it's a natural thing. Now, if we could throw ourselves completely to God and to his will and be left to our own self and just let the mind of Christ be in us, then same uh, apparitions of the Spirit would work through us just as the natural thing does, just the same thing. Because we were first created for that pur purpose, to control, to rule, and to uh, praise God, and to live for God. Now, Jesus said, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and shall be given unto you. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you. Now, the Father and his word is inseparable, because the word is his son. In the beginning was the word, 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God and His Word is inseparable. You cannot have God without having His Word. And when you have His Word, you have God. If you want to go back a little far, we back as far as historically we could speak. The Word, in the beginning, was the Word. But what is a Word? A Word is a thought manifested, a thought spoken forth. God first, He perceived the thought and spoke it, and it became a Word, and the Word became material. So everything that God has spoken His Word, received into the right channel, will materialize that Word for whatever the promise behind it is. God will do it. He's obligated to it. Then if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, then you have God, the word, in you. And you believe the word just as you believe God because it is God. And it's inseparable. Then if you have God's word in you, you have God's life in you. You have God in you. And whatever God's word speaks forth out of you, it'll have to come to pass just like it was spoke from God. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that will I do. Did you ever realize what that means? Do you realize if we go before God in the name of Jesus, it's just the same as Jesus himself praying? Mm -hmm. It isn't me praying anymore if I come in his name and he recognizes his name and Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, that I do. And then I go to the Father in Jesus' name. It isn't me praying anymore. It's Jesus. But it's His Spirit praying through me. And then I've got to receive what I ask for because He said it, and it's God's own word. Yeah, it, yeah. it can't be nothing else but produce just what it says. So when we believe that we read, this is the confidence we have in God. That we get what we ask for, for we God and cannot take back His word. Yeah. He's got to say that he's word. Yes. So then, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, I thought you were, and it'll be given unto you. Isn't that simple? And first created, he was made for that purpose. Then through the fall, uh, we was taken away from that. And then in redemption, we was brought back to it again. And the only thing that hinders the human race today from being superior and controlling what like we did in the beginning is because that the power lines or the outlet of God made in the human being has been clogged up. That's right. Sometimes I say this reverently. Sometimes theology and church doctrines have clogged up That's your right. faith lines. Clogged up your lines to you have been taught that those things can't be. And they put the block in the way. Could you imagine this building here being uh, energized Tonight for life by the electricity. Electricity is an unseen force. And it's harnessed and brought on and Benjamin Franklin first found it. He screamed, I've got it. He didn't know what he had. He had something. Yeah. <laughs> but it ran from Edison and put it to work. And today we can send a wireless telegram from that this place here to anywhere around the world by a wireless telegram, an unseen force moving through space. But no man can touch it, only machinery can touch it because it's too fast for their eye. But yet it's the first, like this telegram coming right through here now. And now, if the natural love of God, which is electricity and things, once harnessed in the right capacity, can do those things, how much more could the power of the Holy Ghost once pass into the human heart yeah. by faith what it could do? Now, God has not promised us electricity, only just knowledge shall increase. But look what the Holy Spirit has promised to the believers today. Yes. And then we look back and see that God put electricity here for certain things, and science is moving into the field of science and bringing it out. But we as Christians, we've become too caused up. We just can't understand. Well, we were thinking about the doctor said, I think it was. And as long as you think that, then you're not thinking God stuff. You, you can't do it. If you say, well, I'm going to die, the doctor said I was going to die. Oh, regards to the doctor, that's the best of his knowledge. If he said he's going to die, humanly speaking, I believe the same thing. But by the word, I don't believe it. Hey. Right. Because he promised me that whatever I asked the Father in his name would be granted. Yes. And I believe that's true. Now, if God can just clear that little 
channel out and run that energy out to that place, then something's going to happen. The whole body is set together to operate, and his life begins just as sure as it takes every member of my body to operate and give me life, so does it take every member of the body of Christ to operate together to give it life. You know what I mean? Some of the church teachers, apostles, and prophets, and gifts of healing, miracles, speaking with tongues, interpretations, so for all those things, and this one great mystic body of Jesus Christ moving on the earth, and someday I believe, and I believe it's near at hand right now. Just like tonight, at this light here, in that light, we'll give up a little string across the, the road of the earth, run that wire out there. That's the material. But now when the energy goes into that wire, it'll produce just as well as it was in here. Now, I believe that a lot of times, in the wiring up of God's spiritual body on earth, we know some plumbers I say that reverently instead of electricians. <laughs> but if uh, the plumbers are out, but we can't save them by wire, you know how to And um, that's a big thing for a Baptist to say, but that's true. But to, uh, if the body is correctly wired up and the Father in heaven turns the big master's switch on, something's going to light up. That's right. As if the body is, if the building is properly wired, and if it's properly cut, and every fiber of our body being lost in Christ into his world alone. Now, if you've got theology, if you've got some doctrine, if you've got some superstition, you got some unbelief, you got something uh, stopped up somewhere, then that energy can never pull through you. But when you got to a place where you're perfectly wired, and the master electrician has opened it by feeling it with the Holy Spirit, the only thing is just turn on the switch, right? and there'll be a light show. <laughs> my friend. And you are the light of the world, a city that's set on a hill yeah. that cannot be here. And we cannot ever be ashamed of ourselves and honestly and humbly confess our unbelief before God and ask him to forgive us of how we represent him in this life. Mm -hmm. He's depending on us. The Old Testament people did not have this blessing. You're not aware of that. You refer back sometimes to Elijah, to Moses, and those people. Moses and Elijah and those people were great men, all the of God, but yet not the privilege that you have. They are not the privilege. You do not have the, the power given them to perform as you have got yourself, everyone that's in Christ. For so they first saw this day and embraced it and believed it. And look for it to come before it ever come. And now we're living right in it and afraid of it. What a pity. Now, if Satan's body can be operated by unbelief and doubt and fear, we'll produce what the scripture says it will. It'll produce sickness. It'll produce disaster. It'll produce all those things. And then people by unbelieving produce that. Shouldn't people believing with the power of that all these things and bring them back to correction? Hey. What did Christ redeem us for? Did you ever think what he redeemed us for? Why didn't he just make you a permit and say, now, there's no need to give them these powers. There's no need to make this man a son of God. There's no need to bring that. I'll just uh, uh, ask him to believe it and write his name in the books of heaven and start a service. But he gave us these redeemed blessings that we might operate the work of God by the energy of the Holy Spirit. In St. John 15, he said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. Hey. You know the, the vine can't bear fruit, mm -hmm. although the fruit is in the vine, but the fruit cannot be brought forth for the vine. It has to have the branch to bear the fruit. Mm -hmm. And you are the branches. Mm -hmm. Now the vine, with all of its energy, cannot produce anything unless the branch is willing to receive the energy. Now, God is depending on you as a member of his body to bear fruit of his spirit. And now, uh, if he's depending on you, let's open up our channels and let the Holy Spirit come in tonight and energize us and, yes. and free us from all these fears and doubts. Revival comes. Someone said the power was only given to the apostles for those things. I'm not a historian, but I have read much history, a church history. And I have never seen a time in all the history of the world 
For there ever was waves of the Holy Ghost that ever struck the church, and a fiery revival for what signs and wonders and miracles followed it. God healed the sick in every age and will continue to do in every Amen. age. For people and churches are willing to let loose and let the Holy Spirit take control of their being. Martin Luther prayed for one of his close companions, and he was healed. John Wesley, I believe, has recorded 240 cases of John Wesley praying for the sick, and they were healed. When he was riding his horse, his horse was lame, and him with a headache. How the God healed both him and the horse. The horse took limping. And I'm down to a moody, stanky, thinny. All of those men, when waves of the Holy Spirit moved across the church, there were signs and wonders. Yeah. By one said one time, if he thought I be with Moody, if so many people being healed in the meeting while the Holy Spirit was silent, although Moody didn't teach a doctrine of divine healing, but he said there was so much healing taking place in his meeting that he thought it would be this, his church would turn into this cathedral like it was in the, this place in France where they come up there and be, to be healed. So many people being healed, testifying of how the Holy Spirit, even without being taught divine healing, the Holy Spirit will do it itself if he can ever get right away from it. It'll produce it. I've seen people who just didn't even come for healing, just be sitting there and go home after being a submissive to the Holy Spirit, and then go home and be perfectly made whole and didn't even realize it. The Holy Spirit is the healer. The Holy Spirit is here tonight to energize other eyes, to do everything. Now you see what the basis of divine healing we have to draw this to a close. It's a part of time. Won't let us speak much longer. We've got to bring it to a close. Now there's something that's wrong. When in the beginning, God created you to be master of every circumstance. That's right. That's, that's the origin. That's the authentic of God's word. There was nothing, nothing could happen unless you were the master of it. That's what you were created for. Then sin came along to his fall and blinded the eyes of it. And now Jesus came along and redeemed it back. And now the Father gives you the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, giving you all these divine promises. Teachers, I humbly saying it, but I love every man or woman that breathes the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And I am not a debater. I'm not the first. I, I don't believe in that. I believe in just preaching the word. That's all. And I believe that this is God's word. And if this is God's word, as I believe it to be, I believe that he's obligated to answer for me every promise that's in the book. If I meet his conditions, and he seals me into his kingdom by the Holy Spirit, which I believe is not a fanaticism, though we have a lot of fanatics with it, but yet it's not a fanaticism, it is a truth. And then God is obligated to his word to take care of his word. He watches over it to uh, perform it. Now, hungry people. You know what every cult in the world today is from? Every cult in the world raised up today because of hungry children. That's what made the heathens in the heathen land worship idols, hungry children. That's what made uh, fanatics go across the country, hungry children, trying to look into the world to find out if this is right or that's right. Every cult springs from that. And today, many things through that, honest hearted people, hungering and thirsty for God, or there's something in a man or a woman all the way back from his origin tells him that there's eternal life somewhere. Some seek it in an idol. Some seek it in a shrine. I was down at a great church in, in Rome a few weeks ago, and they taken me to a church where all the monks that had died, they were burying them in there like they plant a garden, and the gardens of them is fenced off. And after they laid down, their, their body deteriorated, the skin worms taking the body. Then they would dig up those bones, and they had all the fixtures in the room of people's bones, the little fingers and so forth. And all along the walls were just human bones wrapped together with skulls and so forth, tying them together. All the whole building was made of that. Many other monks died, and in the grave there, going away to come back and have their bones placed in that. Now, some of those skulls I noticed as I passed along with the guide, and some of those skulls were rubbed completely white, where people go around and rub those skulls of those monks, thinking that perhaps in there they might receive a blessing 
They might receive something from somewhere else from where that monk went. There's a very striking thing at the back of the building of the church where it was at, and there's a sign there I thought was very appropriate. It said, We were once as you are now, and someday you will be as we are now. And that's true. It gives you something to think about. But now, rubbing those skulls, thinking that maybe there would be a blessing. What is it? Hungry-hearted people somewhere, thinking maybe that someone that once occupied this body has moved on and could give them a blessing by rubbing their skull. That's only the human. That's only something in the heart calling out, wanting, reaching out, hungering and thirsting to find something. Now, there's got to be something right, and there's got to, if there are hungers in the human heart for such as that, and we see the basic beginning of it, and see how it's led down, there's got to be something that's truth and something that's false. Yes, it's just amen. got to be things. I say that reverently with all my heart. And I say it is your brother. And I am not belittling anyone's belief or, or any religion that you have. In here tonight, probably many religions represent and many religious people of different sects of denominations and so forth. And I respect every one of them. But now let's just look right down up to this little basic thought here before we pray for the sick. Let's look down and see. Jesus said, in this last text now that we're going through the first, if ye abide in me and my word in you, Jesus said, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. We have everlasting life. We've accepted that by faith. We believe it. Now, Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Even more than this, the right translation is more, the, the King James here says greater, which is greater, which means not, not in quality, it couldn't be greater, but in quantity, because he could be all over the world. He could be doing the work here in Italy and in Paris and everywhere else doing the work. More than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. A little while the world seeth me no more, yet you will see me, for I will be with you even in you. To the the world. Yes. Now, we believe as Christians that Jesus Christ that died, you believe that when Jesus was here, when he walked on the earth here, that he healed the sick. How many believe that with all yes. Yes. He raised the dead. He cast out evil spirits. And he did nothing except the Father showed him, he said. Is that right? Yes. St. John 5, 19, he said, Dearly, dearly, I say unto you. Now, he wasn't a person that went around and just said, Bring this and here, let me show up and heal him. No, no, no. He went around and where the Father showed him what to do, he went and done it. When he was here on earth, we, I say this, maybe out of repetition, I don't mean it to be that way, but I've said it before. But let's look at his life just a few moments to see what type of person he was. Then we can have an idea of what he should be today. Now, when he was here on earth, he was a perfect example of everything of the Godhead. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ was God. The body of Jesus was only the tabernacle of God. It's where Almighty God Himself lived and dwelt in a human being. Amen. Yeah. You believe that, don't you? Yeah. You have to to be saved. You have to believe that. He was deity Himself, made flesh here on earth to manifest his love to the people and to take away sin out of the earth. He came here in order that he could anchor death in his own body. He could anchor sickness in his own body. The curse that ought to have been on you, he took it upon himself and had to die as a man in order to redeem you back to this full fellowship with the Father again. What a marvelous thing. Well, our, our hearts can't conceive what a thing that was, but he did. We're, we're too slow. Our minds are sluggish. The, the bowels have been stopped up. They've been paralyzed by unbelief and fear and doubting. It can't flow free like it should do. Unless we let the Holy Spirit so dominate our eyes till it pushes those bowels to life again and starts to operate. Mm -hmm. see? Then we can see that. Sure, it's the Father. Then unconsciously, your faith is there. You don't have to worry about where you got faith enough to do this or faith enough to do that. It's just there anyhow. Amen. You just do it because the Father said, so it's the living word in you, and God's in you, manifest himself just like he was in Christ. You said, like he was in Christ? Yes, sir. He said, the works that I do shall you also. Even more than this, for I go to my Father. Now, that's his word, St. John 14, 12. He gave that promise. Everyone would believe that was inspired. And... 
So the little guy and the world will see me no more, yet you shall see me. For I will be with you until the end of the age of the apostles. No. I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Amen. Yeah. Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That was he when he was here on earth. He was a man, humble, born lowly in a manger. He had no great well education as we know of any schools. They want to know where he got this wisdom when he comes to his own country. For his people there said, what school did he go to? What, what seminary is he from? They know nothing about him. He's not the carpenter's son out here, a peasant. He had no training of man at the age of 12, but his wisdom was, it, it outstood anything that the teachers know. There was a difference in having worldly, earthly education and having the power of God to dominate in wisdom with you. For he hid it from the educators and revealed it to those such as were yeah. So there's no need of trying to find the two seminaries and two schools. You'll never do it. It's a hidden mystery that can only be known as God will let it be known. Amen. Now, if we see that and know that that is the truth. Now, watch him just a moment. When we see him here on earth, a fellow Philip coming back to save. He went and told his, his friend, Nathaniel. He brought him to the prayer meeting, or whatever they were having, perhaps staying in the audience, or wherever it was, but Jesus looked down and fastened his eyes, or wherever he might have been in the prayer line, or wherever it was. Jesus said, Behold, there is an Israelite in whom there is no vow. And he said, Well, when did you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. What astonished him, he said, Why, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. He said, because I told you that, you believe? He said, you'll see greater than this. Amen. Greater is only promised to those who believe what is right to walk in it. So if you refuse that, there's only one thing left, is darkness. That's right. But while it is life, we'll notice him, he didn't claim to be a healer when he passed through Bethesda and all those crippled and lame people laying there. He never healed a one of them. Went up to a man laying on a little pallet as it was, a quilt or something laying there. He said, will thou be made whole? Now, the Bible said Jesus knew that he was there and knew he had been that way for 38 years. Now, that's the Jesus of yesterday, isn't he? He knew that he had been that way 38 years. He said, well, why be made whole? Why not that man blind, lame, halt, withered as he passed through that pool? Why don't you make all them whole? He explains it in the 19th verse. He said, dearly, dearly, I'm saying to you, the son can do nothing in himself. But what he sees the father doing. And what the father did, he showed the son. See what I mean? When the woman touched his gun and he said, I've healed you. He said, Thy faith is faith in him. Her faith in him is what made it right. The apostle Peter and his shadow passing over the sick never healed him. Not the shadow, but their faith in the apostle. It was their point of contact to get to God. Now, Jesus, when he was here on earth, promising these saints, now look, the very things he did, he never claimed to heal anybody. He only claimed to do as the Father showed him by vision. But he was possessed with a power that we all know that he would look into the audience when he was standing, and he would say a certain thing to a person. Like, for instance, a woman who touched his garment, something went away from him. There's some way he knew that something had happened. I, I hope we see this now. Jesus had some power, let's just say it that way. Jesus, the, the Redeemer, to redeem us back to what we was before Adam's transgression, when he was here on earth as an example, Son of God, for the first indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and after he could bring many children to God, when he was here, he was possessed with a power that when a certain person had faith, he could turn to the audience and call him the world. A woman touched his garment, it satisfied her. She ran back into the audience, she felt that her blood issue was going to be all right then. So she stood back in the audience, stand out there. Jesus turned around, looked around through the audience, said, Who touched me? <clears throat> he necessarily didn't have to say, Who touched me? He could have found her anyhow. Yeah, so he just looked around over the audience, <laughs> said, Who touched me? <laughs> she stood just as innocent looking. He said, By faith, that's faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was Jesus' blessing. Now, I want to ask you something. When he was sure on earth, that's the kind of a life that he lived. 
That's the kind of the work that he did, the work of the Father. He said, if I come to do the will of God, and I do the will of the Father, he come to fulfill or to obey the word of God, and God was in him fulfilling his desire to the people. Now he said, as to I go away, the Father will come in the form of the Holy Spirit and will be with you, in you, until the end of the world. And the very things that I do shall you do also. That's good to you, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Now I want to ask something. Then if he come tonight, in this form that I say that he has come in, I want to ask you a question. Did Jesus death, and I want you to go to bed tonight on this. Think of it. When he was here on earth in a body of flesh, he had power to heal the sick. He had power to see vision and to do as the Father gave him to do. Well, in his vicarious suffering and death and burial and resurrection, did he lose the power that he had? Then his obedience to God, to his suffering, death and burial and resurrection, did he lose the power that God gave him? Did he gain power? Yes. In St. Matthew 19:18, it said this. I mean, St. Matthew 28:18, it is. He said, "All oh, after his resurrection, all oh, powers in the heavens and earth is given into my hand." Then he did not lose his power; he gained more power. Right. Is that right? right? Then, if he has gained more power, then he can do more things. Is that right? Now he's living in the church today. Do you believe that? Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, promising the same work that he did would we do even more. You believe it to be the truth? Yeah. Then what basis do we have tonight for our faith? The first thing, friends, that some of you here may not believe in divine healing, may not believe in the power of God. First you were born here to control all circumstances. Sin. I want to ask you, minister, something. How can you deal with sin without dealing with sickness? That's right. You cannot deal with sin on any major without dealing with sickness. For sickness is the attribute of sin. Mm -hmm. You can't touch sickness or sin over without dealing with sickness mm -hmm. and all its attributes. For sin is the main, it's the head of the serpent. Kill the earth, you actually kill the body. And you can't Kill it at the head without killing the body. So if he just come to heal us and not to save us, we could have something to say about salvation. But he come to deal with salvation for the soul, which is the head, and when he kills the head, he's got to kill the rest of the body. So you can't deal with Jesus couldn't come to redeem us from just sin without redeeming us from sickness. Or all the things that go with it, even to death. Mm -hmm. He redeemed us from death. And we do not die. There's not a scripture in the Bible that the Christian die. We have everlasting life and cannot die. God promised to resurrect the body in the last day. We rest in this assurance. Now we have salvation, happiness, and joy, which is the earnest of our salvation, of our complete redemption someday, and we have divine healing as the earnest of our immortal body, which is coming on. When we receive the the attributes of his death into this old physical sin cursed body, it brings it back, snaps it back again to life again to prove to us that there's a land beyond the river where someday we're going where there is no sickness and sorrow with us. And the complete Eden again. May the Lord bless you, my friends. Now, my contention is to you Chicago people in around the world, that Jesus raised from the dead. And the things that he did then, he does yet. Now, I'm not telling you to come join up with my belief, for I do not belong to any church. I don't belong to any denominational church. I have nothing against any denominational church. But I'm only asking you this. As a denominational Christian, with only a profession of faith, you will never see the mystery. You, you stay in your church, 
But be bound again of the Spirit of God so the bowels in your innermost being, in your mind and soul can open up to the full statue of what God wants you to be as a Christian in that denomination. And you'll be good. Your pastor will appreciate you if he's a spiritual man. May the Lord Jesus now come on the scene. I've talked plenty, too much, but I want you to know that we have a basis on the Bible. This may be just a little different than what you ever heard it. You may have thought that the people here a few nights ago, or I close, just come to my mind and must say it, a man belonged to a certain denominational church that did not believe in divine healing. I was in a little prayer meeting and he caught me. And he said to me, If you be the servant of the Lord for the glory of God, that I myself might see him for the glory, here's a little triple girl, heal her and raise her up before me, and I'll believe it. I see the man was lost. So he was a minister. He was lost. He didn't realize that the same spirit that said, come down off the cross, and we'll believe you. That was a sinner sitting in the next room. So God, the sinner brought him up here. So now, sir, you take this poor lost sinner here, that's sinful, for the glory of God, and save his soul tonight. And if you, when you save him, I'll heal her. That's right. You save this one, I'll heal this one. <laughs> right? Uh, sure. He could not save the man. No. Neither could I heal the, the cripple girl. But Jesus Christ can save the girl, and Jesus Christ can heal the uh, hey. save the man or heal the girl. Yes. Right? Well, it does not lay within man. We're only instruments that the revelation of God can be brought forth through our lips as the Holy Spirit speaks as we yield ourselves to Him. And any divine gift, many of you ministers here, you would not say if you just set it up a sermon and said, talk lost. You want to say it comes with inspiration. I believe it. Certainly. But it has to come from the Holy Spirit that energizes you to speak that message. If it isn't, you'll never be successful. That's right. This is Charles Finney and so forth and then who copied this sermon out and when he got up there and preached for the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the same sermon he preached the night before, hundreds of the also, see? There's such a difference. It's got to be by inspired. The Holy Spirit's got to unconize in that, that thing. So is it with healing. There's got to be something take place through a divine gift that will energize the people with the Holy Spirit to believe. Now, if Jesus comes on the scene tonight and performs the very things that he did here in the Bible as a proof that my contention for him is the truth. Not that I'm the truth, but he's the truth that I'm representing. Any man can come tell you anything he wishes to. You don't have to believe it. But if a man tells you something God turns around and proves to you that that's the truth, and it's according to the word, then you better believe it. It's a good thing to do it. God bless you while we pray. Father, now long speaking. <coughs> Most 40, 45 minutes is speaking to the people, trying to get them to see their purpose here. Their purpose is not to go to work and come in at night and eat the meals and go to bed and read the paper the next morning and go back to work again day in and day out. Now it is to go to church on Sunday morning, listen to the sermon, go home, go to work. And, Father, they're here to be instruments of yours. You redeem them back to their right estate. Man in his right mind, believe God for all things. Oh, we pray, Father, that you'll energize us tonight with your holy presence and send forth thy Son, the Lord Jesus, that gave this promise that the world wouldn't see him no more, yet we should see him. For he'd be with us, even in us, to the end of the world. And believing tonight, thou leave this lovely audience of people set here in the room, believing that the Lord Jesus himself is standing here, knowing that not even a star of the part of the street, rather than being knowing of it, That's right. knowing that he's sure to perform that which he has promised. Therefore, Father, I commit myself to you as an unworthy vessel. This frail being of mine, Lord, I pray that you'll open every valve of my being tonight. Not only mine, but every person that's in this building tonight. May their hearts spring open. May the Holy Spirit rush in like wave after wave. I will. And may the people 
awakened to the fact that Jesus has raised from the dead and is standing here among us tonight, grant it all, as I commit myself to you and ask that you will grant these same times that you did when you were here on earth towards the sick and the revelation of God. May it be brought to pass tonight that the people will go out of here rejoicing home. May the blind go see, the deaf hear, the dumb speaking, the crippled walking. Now, J number one. Let's see, we'll line up a few of the people. J number one. Look on the back of it, it's a little card, and on the back of it, it's got a number and a, and a J. Who has J number one? Will you hold up your hand if you can hold your hand? Number one. Who has number two? Would you hold up your hand? Number two. Number three. Number three, all right, line up over here. Number one, two, three, who has four? Hold up their hand. Four, the lady here, over here, lady. Number five, who has number five? Sir, over here. Number six, who has number six? Lady there, all right. Number seven, number seven, all right, lady. Number eight, who has number eight? Hair card number eight, would you raise eight? All right, lady. Number nine, who has number nine? Hair card nine, could you hold up your hand? Number nine, do you have number nine, sir? Will the usher's hand go down and help him a minute? Number ten, who has sir? card number ten? Would you hold up your hand, friend? Ever who you are? Number ten, all right, lady. Eleven, who has sir? card eleven? Over here, eleven, all right. Twelve, would you just raise your hand? Number twelve, the lady here, all right. Thirteen, who has sir? card thirteen? Raise up your hand, if you will. Prayer card number thirteen. Would you raise your hand, Every who has it? Am I not seeing it? Someone look at their neighbor. It may be a deaf person. If there's anyone who can't get up, can't raise your hand. Look around at your neighbor and see. Maybe somebody paralyzed and can't even get up. Prayer card number 13. Is it here? Anyone look at your card, your neighbor, someone sitting next to you. Is there anyone in a... Any... There's a lady on the top. Would you look at her number? Uh, oh, there is that 13? Oh, it's uh, all 13. No one has 13. All right, 14. Who has number 14? Anyone prayer card 14? Would you hold up your hand? What, 14, 15. Prayer card 15. Would you raise your hand? 15. Prayer card 16. Would you raise your hand? 17. All right. 17, 18. Would you raise your hand? Prayer card 18. Who has prayer card 18? Would you raise your hand? It's prayer card 18. Look, now when I call those numbers, somebody might not be able to get up. Somebody might be deaf and came here, and they wouldn't know when the number was called. 18, 19. Anyone has prayer card 19? Raise your hand. Prayer card 18 and 19. 20? Maybe I went for and well, we'll talk. All right. All right, sir. All right. Now, well, we'll, we'll wait there just for a few minutes and see if we can see it. Maybe we can call a few more in a few moments. During the time, watch around for the numbers and so forth. If these come in, uh, these 13, 18, and 19. And it was this 20? It's 20. 20, all right. Or they come in while you help place them in the line. If they're out. Now, now how many out there is sick tonight? Has your prayer card? No way of getting in the prayer line. You don't pray hard. You won't drive the hand again. Don't you raise your hand? Just raise your hand. All right. Now I'll, I'll tell you something, my my dear beloved friend. If you'll do this, if you'll forget about me being Brother Branham, see. If you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is here with you, that I'm just only a, 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 your brother, and if you if you just believe the Lord Jesus is here, and will you sit and do this? If you'll do this for me, just to sit down and say, Lord Jesus, I truly believe that that's the truth. I believe the man has told the truth. For as we draw by out of your Bible, and I believe it to be the truth. Now, Lord, I, I know the man doesn't know me. And if you just have him to turn around to me like he did to the, like he did to the woman that uh, had the blood issue or blind, uh, the blind uh, man at the gate of Jericho, uh, uh, Bartimaeus, and say, as thy faith is healed, yeah. if, if you have them turn to me and say that, the Lord Jesus, in that poor unworthy person there, but if he's representing you, 
then I'm going to pray and ask you, I believe it, and I want to be healed, and I want for you to give me enough faith tonight to pull that man around and tell me uh, something or other that, that, I, that, I, that I want to know, or see, or something like that. You just do that. I pray to the Lord for some sign or something like that. We don't, we don't have to have signs now. Remember, we can adult in this generation speak that your signs. But, friends, we have been so educated that we are educated away from the supernatural. That's right. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them, please. We are never seeking signs, but God is always there with signs. Amen. From Amen. the very beginning in Revelation, and, and Genesis and Revelation in the Bible, run of the church that was constantly signs, and when there was no signs, there was no God. Mm-hmm. May God bless you. I want to ask you, you know the life of Jesus Christ as is written in the Bible, how that he did no miracles except the Father showed him, and how he told Philip, he told the woman at the well how many husbands she had. It startled the woman. And if that Lord Jesus will turn tonight and vindicate, if that is the truth, will you accept him as your Lord and Savior? If you will, raise your hand and say, I, I, I believe right then. When I see it done again, I'll throw down all my brows and I believe. Now, for that cause, may the Lord Jesus. Now, you see, I was telling you last night about India. Look what a challenge is right now. Wait till the Lord gives something in the meeting that I can see what he's going to do. Then watch that challenge. Watch that challenge the same way. See, it's not that we challenge, but it's when God tells us to do anything, we believe it. We believe this Bible to be the truth. But we can't overstep it on this side. Of it. We've got to do it. Never lays within the power of me to do it. Never lays the power of any man. It lays in the power of God. Amen. And God has to reveal Himself to the person somehow to give Him faith. Here's His word that He'll heal you. If He reveals it to you that He heals you, you never come to this for us. You won't need it. It's already over. <coughs> when He reveals it to you that He'll do it, you don't want no more than the revelation of God's word. Amen. May the Lord bless now. Well, if the pianist will over there, my dear brother, slowly, if you will, the little song only believes. I let it quieten just a few moments. Usually the prayer line, I don't know how long it'll last. I told you I wasn't in no hurry to leave Chicago. I want to stay here. If I've got something in Chicago that this preacher's here long for 20 years. Every time I come here, I feel something moving, strange. I don't know what it is. I want to find out. And if God being willing, I want to stay until he reveals it. Now, Lord, here we are beginning the service tonight. Spoke a little long the first night. But we're in no hurry, Father. Everybody stayed right in their seats waiting. We're here because we love you. That's the reason we're waiting, Father. Not because your servant is speaking, but because that your spirit is out there on them. It just fascinates them and holds them. Every one of us, Father, are looking, trying to find something behind the curtain there. We know we come from somewhere and we're going somewhere. We want to know more about it. Will you please, Father, reveal it to us tonight? Reveal yourself here. Take something like you did the bread that day and do it tonight. Like as the people know that it was Jesus, just like those disciples up there to the at that time. And the way you broke that bread, they know that you're the only one to do it that way. And when you do it your way tonight, here in the building, do something like you did when you were here on earth. And we'll be thankful for it, Father. Now, as a divine gift which is given by you and ministered to me by an angel, I submit myself into your hands that this gift may magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He asked it anything. Amen. Amen. Wish I could always come to me and feeling this way. <laughs> you just right here now. <laughs> what a feeling. Oh, how long. This is the first time since I come back. Now, everyone, be real reverent. Be in faith. Be believing. Look this away. Brother Joseph, you and Billy and all of you watch the time, for I feel that God's fixing to do something. 
Uh, you, you remember last night? The human, the revelation, the vision. This is hope. This is faith. And this is perfection. Thus saith the Lord. Right now I feel in this realm that God's fixing to do something. I feel real good about something. I don't know what it is, but I feel that he's fixing to do something. May his blessings come to us now. And now, pray for me that I'll be able to submit myself, just as an instrument, your brother, to the Holy Ghost, that he may come and take this body to manifest his beloved Son. What a privilege. I am worthy, but yet who would be worthy? The blood of Jesus Christ makes this happen. Right. Unmerited grace. Now, I believe this is the lady that I'm to pray for. Is that right, lady? I'm to pray for you. I want you to come here. And now, to every person here, if you have a prayer card, and in the line, if you don't solemnly believe it with all your heart, don't you come in the prayer line. Or remember, it could turn to be something horrible for you. So you believe. You've heard of those things. Now I want the engineer, if they will, to step up the volume. If the vision starts moving on this here, I don't know how loud I'll be speaking. And some of you kind of push me or coax me as if I can, because I know this woman standing here now, the angel of the Lord, whose picture is on the paper that you've seen. We have some of those with us after a while. He's right here now. I want you, as you come to me in the prayer line, just look and answer the questions as I ask you. You just answer what I tell you, then you be the judge. Now, this lady standing here before me, perfect stranger, I do not know her, and I perhaps never seen you in my life. We're strangers to each other, are we? We are strangers. I'm only saying this, my sister, as a contact, a point of contact. In other words, see, there's something going on that I cannot explain. See, it's, it's something supernatural. It's beyond my knowing what. But somehow there's something has to happen to you, something happened to me. Now, if you were standing in the presence of our Lord, the Savior, he would know just exactly, if the Father would reveal it to him, what your trouble was, what you were here about. Is that right? He could tell that. But he, uh, now the reason I said just answer me as a talk, because sometimes when a vision is going on, I'm still talking and I don't know. I picked it up on the tape the other day that people were trying to say something back. I didn't know if I was still talking to vision because it takes me somewhere else. And I have to talk just as I see it. Then I will return back. You can be the judge. And if God can know something that was in your life, you, you'll know that whether well, that's true or not. I don't. But if he's here in his supernatural way and can know what, what you have been in life, and then tell you what will be, if what has been is true, then what will be is said will be true. Is that right? Now, whether he will or not, I do not know. But now, did you notice why I'm talking to you? So uh, believers out here might understand, Jesus called a woman one time to bring him a drink of water. And he just called her for a purpose to talk to her. After he talked to her a long time, he went right straight to the point. He said, go get your husband. He said, I don't have any. That's where her trouble was. He said, you got five. She said, well, you're a prophet. She said, he said, she said to him, I know that when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who is he? Said, you must be a prophet. Now watch. To know the secrets of the heart is a sign of the Messiah. Is that right, audience? Yes. The woman said at the well, said, when Messiah comes, he'll know these things. We know that when Messiah comes, it's a sign, the Messiah's sign of his presence. What will happen to these people who call it mental telepathy? Or witchcraft, I don't know. But he talked to the woman to find out something about her. Now, me not knowing you, and you not knowing me, and yet the Holy Spirit to be here that would reveal something that you know the truth, 
and, and I know nothing about, then you will have to say that I have some way of knowing about you. Is that right? Would you believe it was the Lord Jesus Christ? You would. Would the audience believe the same? Amen. May he grant it. It's my prayer. You're wondering why I'm styling st- about awaiting here. It's spirit all around me, you see, everywhere. It's, it's, uh, usually if I can get the patient out alone by themselves, it's different. But here, here's a line standing right behind me, a whole group. Here they are sitting all out through here. They're around here, back behind me, everywhere. It's just spirit everywhere. And he's saying about this one spirit. Maybe I look this way and happen to see somebody sitting down in here. See? It would be different. So it's, it's something that God has to do in his sovereign grace. Now, it has to govern itself. I cannot govern it. Yeah. But I see that you, there's a, a man standing around where this woman is. And it's a, it's a, a sick man. And it's... A, it's not your husband, it's a, it's a friend of the family. It's just a friend. And the man's a Christian. And uh, the man is, I see him making ready, or a doctor has examined him, giving something to drink in his mouth. And it went into his stomach, and it, it, it's, a, it's an alterated stomach. And he's up for an operation immediately to be operated on. You've come to stand in his place. Those things are true, aren't they? If they all raise up your hand. If the Lord Jesus is here to know what you want, not even for yourself, it's for someone else, then can he grant our request? Do you believe now that he raised from the dead? His same power was then is now. Does the audience believe the same thing? Our Heavenly Father, I lay my hands upon this woman. In a representative way, if she stands here in the Christian act to represent someone, you stood to represent us all. You represented us in death as a sinner. You represented us in sickness as a healer. And Father, you represented us in the resurrection of immortal life someday. And we thank you for it. And I bless this woman that when she goes to the person that she is standing for, may the person not die but be made well. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, amen. Amen. Well, your friend, you're anxious. You had it in your hand. When you take that anxious, you place it on. How this audience ought to be shook by the power of the Almighty God. How strange we can set sail in those things. Come forward with you, lady. We're strange to each other, aren't we? I do not know you. I have never seen you in my life. And yet here you stand tonight, and I stand in your presence, and we are both in the presence of Almighty God, our Father. Do you believe me to be his servant? And all these other people to be his servants, we're all Christians. You believe that his great body of the mystic body of the Lord Jesus Christ has assembled here tonight together, these Christian people. You're a Christian yourself. I see someone that's laying down, it's a woman. And she has fallen. You're having some kind of a spell that, that you pass out a black eye. And I see something you, as a door or something you went through or fell through or, or is, a, is a screen door. You fell through it and you hurt your, your ankle, your left ankle. And it's all the ligaments loose in your ankle. And uh, they want to heal up. And you've been thinking that if you could ever get here to the platform, that Jesus Christ would make you well. That is the truth. If it is, hold your hand. You believe you're in his divine presence? Then if I become anointed with his spirit, 
are enough to tell you things that no one knows, perhaps, but you alone, and God. And he said, that would make me a believer. Is that right? He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they'll get well. Right on. Is that true? Then come here for your healing. O oh God, our Father, creator of heavens and earth, offer of everlasting life and giver of every good gift. Upon the merit of this, my sister's faith and thy word and the resurrection of thy son and his presence here now with us, I pronounce her to be well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have faith now. Believe with all your heart. Supposingly, we are strangers to each other, ladies. God knows you, knows all about you. I do not know, but you're confident that something's going on. Perhaps a little different than what you thought when you first come up. But it's his presence. That's the doing these things. It isn't me. I'm just a man. You believe Jesus heals you? That stomach trouble sitting there, sir? You believe the Lord Jesus will make you well? If you believe it with all your heart, or use the red shirt on there. Go ahead and leave what you want to now. The faith you have. You didn't realize, sir, how that was done. You thought it was ulcer, but it was cancer. Well, this woman standing here suffers with cancer, too. And that's where it was pulling from. She has cancer. And that's a growth that's on the breast. The doctor told you it was malignant. And it's on your left breast. Isn't that right? You believe you're going to get well now? In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Have faith. Believe with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Just believe that's all God asks you to do. That's right, brother. That's happening. I see there too a spirit moving over a, a man looking at me sitting right here. It's something goes to that other man, two of them together. You stuck with a rupture, don't you, sir? Said he yes, sir. So do you over there. Isn't that right? You both have rupture. Raise your hands up if that's right. Both of you, man. That's right. Believe with all your heart now. God bless you. Now. We are strangers to each other, aren't we, ladies? I do not know you, but there's someone here who does know you. That's our Heavenly Father. He knows all about you. You're suffering with a a nervous trouble. And that's not altogether what you're here for. You've got other troubles, too. And the main thing you're here for is for somebody else. And that's a young boy, about 18 or 19 years old. And that boy is a nervous trouble, too. I've seen that a doctor, and they're giving him some kind of a, or it's a shock treatment, the boy. And they, he's suffering with a, it's a, a nervous, a disturbance. He, he's self-conscious. He don't like to get around with people that he is a Christian, but the devil has him bound. 
and he's afraid to come to church. You're healed, and go blame him now that he can be healed also. God bless you. Have faith. Don't die. Believe with all your heart. Jesus Christ will make you well. Reverend Brad, I'm going to look at the black pants and I can't stand like that. Four years wide figure. You believe so with all oh, your heart? Oh, my life. Black pants will be. Reverend Brad, the black pants are four years. Oh, my life. I can't stand like that. How long have you been a Christian? A long time. You believe with all your heart? You believe me to be his servant? You believe the Holy Spirit is here? I do not know you. God does know you. I suppose this is our first time meeting, but he, he knows all about you. Something strange about you, sir. Please be reverent in the audience. Do not disturb the meeting. Be reverent. Go home and eat what you want to. The Lord Jesus healed you of stomach trouble there. God bless you. <laughs> Believe. Have faith in God. I keep seeing a strange thing around you, sir. I can't make out what it is. Just a moment. Or it's a, it's a wall, it's a place, it's a, you are, or I see you're, you're from a place, it's, it's a penitentiary or something other around somewhere where you're from. And um, that's uh, Michigan City, Indiana. And you are here because that you're nervous. And you, your wife is all upset about something. And it's about uh, an elderly lady, and she's in a hospital with cancer, and that's her mother, your mother-in-law. You're a preacher, too. And your name is Robert McKinney. That is right, isn't that right? Things will be all right. Almighty God, I will die. Send blessings upon the man now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Be merciful. God. You believe? Have faith in God. You look earnest, sir. You got something on your heart, haven't you? It's a friend. That's cancer, doesn't it? You've got a little girl you're interested in, too. She's got polio, hasn't she? That's true. Stand up on your feet. Oh, God, be merciful to this. Our friend here standing for someone else. May his desire be granted to him. According to thy word, Lord, as I have come, walk through all the things you desire and pray, believe you receive it, and we shall have it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, my brother. The angel of light slipped quickly and went to someone back here, but I, I think it's my friend sitting there. Brother Flanagan, I was looking, and I believe it was him. Imagine what attracted my attention. I'm not beside myself, but it seems that it was a, a long there. Lady has arthritis sitting there. Isn't that right, lady? That's what you're standing. It's for you with arthritis. 
இத்தனை நச்சி something wrong with her hip is not right you have colitis also don't you is not right you believe Jesus makes you well put your hand over on your friend and you all put your hands together almighty God all good life give her every good gift send our blessings upon you and make you all well. give to them the desire of their hearts that they may be made well Jesus, 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 This is not your time. You are, uh, uh, you take care of this time. But you come because of a gardener. And you take care of this time. And this time has got a little sister. And the sister is older. And the sister has got bad eyes. And the mother is a, of these children are Catholic. And she told you before coming, if the babies would be healed, she'd become a believer. What a fire. Almighty God, Father of everlasting life, give her of every good gift. Send thy blessings upon this child. Grant the healing, may thy virtues, Lord, which raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, now quicken this child. Grant it, Father, to Jesus, thy Son, I ask this. With our heads I please, just a moment, everyone. I want to minister to the child with every one of your heads bowed, eyes closed, please. God of mercy, send thy blessings to the little one and make it well. I pray through Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. How you may raise your head. Thank you. Look here, darling. Look up here, Brother Brandt. The baby was cross-eyed. I look this way, honey, over here. I look back this way, over here. Look over here towards me. The eyes are straight as yours is. Oh, okay. Take it on, brother mother. Let us go praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, believer. 
Now we all need to keep your head down. Sight come to your eyes. You may raise your head, audience. I asked her just now to touch my nose. Do it, would you, lady? Turn your little rejoicing. You're healed. Do you believe with all your heart? Please, God, take that diabetes away from you and you'll be made well. You believe it all your heart? God bless you. Form your Lord and God. Say and thank the Lord for this great God bless you. You believe him, sir? You thank God, take that stomach trouble away from you and you go home and eat your supper? He has. God bless you. God bless you. Give you troubles enough for God to be on. He can make it all well. You believe that with all your heart? Come on. Father, in the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus, heal our sister. Amen. So don't doubt. Just believe with all your heart. You shall receive. Just a moment, something come before me, a large building. Now, everyone read it. Our Heavenly Father is speaking something. I see a building keeps coming before me, except in a, in a city, and the city is in a valley. It's got a great towering spire up on it, a great high place, moves off, kind of in that shape. It moves now, it's coming to the corner. It's a woman, and she's taken by loved ones to a, it's a clinic, it's Mayo Brothers clinic, and the woman comes from Michigan. They take her in for an examination, but they can't find out what's the matter with her. It's a brain disease. There's someone in here, sitting in here somewhere. It's a woman that's rather heavy, and she, oh, we're bound. God bless you, lady. Laying on the stretch, it's you. Stand up on your feet. 